Today I'm going to talk about how to build your own pandemic ready kit. It's kind of fun and I made mine for half the cost of those marketed on the internet. The experts believe that within the next 20 years a pandemic is imminent. Depending on how widespread the pandemic is, it could have societal collapse and hospitals unable to keep up with the demand. Donna Nash was featured on an episode of National Geographic's Doomsday Preppers. As part of her preparedness efforts, she was shown giving free pandemic supplies packaged in a bucket to her neighbors. While I don't share the depth of Donna Nash's fear or her zealous pandemic preparedness, she did inspire me to build my own pandemic preparedness kits for each of my children and their families. Naturally, I tried to do this in the most economical way as possible. I started with a used six gallon bucket and lid. I got a bunch of them on Craigslist. A dollar for the bucket, 50 cents for the lid, so a dollar fifty all together. On the lid, I attached simple instructions that I laminated with my home laminator. The top sheet told them how to get ready. It reminded them that the critical infrastructure is at risk during a pandemic wave. We might experience utility outages, food supplies, and gasoline shortage and hospitals might be unable to keep up with the demand. Good to have on hand three months of food, including Gatorade for hydration, three months of water, estimate one gallon per person per day, three months of supplies, including bleach, hand sanitizer, toilet paper, and feminine products, three months of pet food and supplies, and stock up on over-the-counter drugs such as aspirin, Tylenol, Motrin, and anti-diarrheal, and maybe cough drops. Determine cooking methods that you could use without power, Coleman stove, grill, campfire, solar oven, etc. And purchase extra batteries, N95 filters, and cooking fuel. The second sheet is for eminent pandemic. It's for practicing good hygiene and maintain social distance, which is paramount to infection prevention. It tells how to stay informed and practice good hygiene by washing your hands, carrying hand sanitizer, and other methods mentioned. Okay, the next one, the pandemic's here. Plan to stay in place for three months or more. Um, subsequent pandemic outbreak waves may occur, so you might have to be there longer than three months. Set up a quarantine room, have a decontamination area prior to entry, isolate, stay at home. If you must go outside, wear your respirator and keep at least six feet or more from others and maintain home security. The final sheet on the bucket lid is probably the most important of all. It tells exactly how you can prevent illness by washing your hands properly. All seven steps to go through, very, very important during a pandemic or a regular flu outbreak. I remember my mom describing how she had to do home quarantine with my sister when she got rheumatic fever in the 1930s. You no longer have to home quarantine for rheumatic fever. Um, it really is a version of strep throat. However, as a society, we are used to putting people in hospitals and having the hospitals take care of everything. In a pandemic, that might not be possible. And we would once again have to learn how to quarantine at home in proper disinfection and isolation methods. That's why I have a sheet like this in every bucket. It goes over infection control, how to set up a, a quarantine room, um, and cleaning and disinfection. Anyway, it's a really important sheet. I laminated it and it's in each bucket. Most of the information that I got for that sheet that I made up, I got from getpandemicready.org. I'll put the link below. Everything that I'm going to show you next fits inside this six pound bucket. I started with putting personal protective equipment in the bucket. I placed two Tyvek suits, two pairs of shoe covers, hair nets, two pair of heavy duty rubber gloves, two pair of safety goggles for eye protection, and a roll of duct tape. I also purchased a reusable P100 respirator and the cartridges that go with it and put that in each kit. Um, we found out the small size works well for the women in our family and the medium size fits the men in the family. 
I also included five one-time use N95 respirators and 100 disposable latex gloves. There are no latex allergies in my family. Next, I gathered supplies to help with sanitation and disinfection. A large can of Lysol spray, a bottle of 32 bleach tablets, two Playtex style gloves, hand sanitizer, antibacterial germ wipes, five 13 gallon kitchen bags, and 10 caution biohazard labels. Since bleach has about a six month shelf life, I thought the tablets would last longer and take up less room. I also copied Mrs. Nash's idea, included a bottle of 150 Steramine tablets. These tablets are supposed to have a 10 year shelf life. Surprisingly, household bleach starts deteriorating after only six months. I would have liked to include some of the red biohazard bags, however they were too expensive, so I settled on the white kitchen bags with the adhesive labels I made. The laminated hygiene and disinfecting sheet that I showed earlier explains the proper disinfecting process and the importance of quarantining an infected or suspected infected family member. In order to monitor fevers, I placed 25 disposable thermometers in each bucket. Dehydration may be a complication of a pandemic. Thus, I also made up five packets of oral hydration solution for each bucket and adhered the recipe to each packet to make more if needed. You need four and a half cups purified water, one half teaspoon salt, and six teaspoons sugar. And you might want to add this to a powdered drink mix so it's more tasty. Also on the enclosed label on the bucket, I state additional over-the-counter medicine should be kept on hand, such as aspirin, Motrin, children's Tylenol, Pepto-Bismol, cough drops, etc. I did not include these in the bucket because these medicines tend to have relatively short expiration dates and should be rotated regularly. Items and clothes label on the bucket. I state what additional over-the-counter medicines are a good idea to keep on hand. Aspirin, Motrin, Children's Tylenol, and Pepto-Bismol. I did not include these in the bucket because these medicines tend to have relatively short expiration dates and should be rotated regularly. It really is amazing how much fits in one of these buckets. The bucket itself could be used to mix bleach solution and as a trash receptacle or as an emergency toilet in a pandemic situation. Donna Nash sells her pandemic kits on the arcready.com website for $98. According to the website, it includes 29 N95 masks, 50 pair of exam gloves, one bottle Steramine, which has 150 tablets, 10 isolation gowns, 10 pair of shoe covers, 10 hair covers, two goggles, hand sanitizer, 40 antibacterial wipes, one box antiviral tissue, eight Gatorade powder sticks, four plastic bags, and a bucket with lid and information sheet. I made my buckets up for less than $50. All in all, I think I like my kit better. Granted, the other kit has 10 disposable gowns, which are nice. I believe they sell for about a dollar a piece on Amazon.com. However, I think the reusable respirators in my kit is better than the 20 disposable N95 masks in the other kit. And I also include five of those in my kit. My kit also includes disposable thermometers, which I think are very important for treatment. Granted, I was lucky enough to find some of the supplies at the YMCA's White Elephant Sale. This is an annual event where local businesses donate surplus new and used items. I only spent $1.50 each for the new Tyvek suits, $1 for the shoe covers altogether, $1.50 for each of the safety goggles, and $1 for each of the heavy-duty rubber gloves at this sale. I received the germ wipes, Playtex gloves, and N95 respirator mask free from the local Menards Home Improvement Store through their rebate program. I always scan their ad each Sunday for free prepping related items. The sugar and salt packets used to make up the oral hydration solution packets could be obtained free by taking a little extra time each time you visit a fast food restaurant. I had leftover labels from another project that I used to make the biohazard and the ORS labels. I did have to buy the remaining items. $15 for the reusable P100 respirator, 
$4 for the disposable thermometers, $3 duct tape, $2 hand sanitizer, $3 evolved bleach tablets, $6.25 sterimine tablets, $5 Lysol spray, and $1 for the kitchen bags. I hope I inspired you to make your own pandemic ready kit in a bucket. It can be a lot of fun and you can use your coupons and your shopping sense and come up with a pretty economical bucket kit. Please let me know if you do. I'd love to see what you create. Stay healthy. And if you'd like more information on pandemic, I've included some resources in the about section of this video. Now, anyone for a rousing game of pandemic? Prepper Popery saying subscribe and share the knowledge. Thank you.